My guest has prayed for five women that have had complete hysterectomies. All five have had children after she prayed. How is this possible? Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I've been so looking forward to interviewing Sandra Kennedy because, Sandra, you knew even as a child you'd be involved in tremendous miracles of physical healing. Tell me what you did as a child. Well, I was about uh, six or seven years old. The Lord uh, spoke to me. Of course, I, didn't, I, didn't, I just heard this voice that said, one day I will use you in healing. Now, was it a thought or was it a voice? It sounded like a voice to me. Now, being older, it probably mm -hmm. was a thought, but it sounded like a voice at the time that I heard it. Uh, you know, when you're, it, it sounded like literally like a voice coming, just some, a big loud voice saying, one day I will use you in healing. So I used to go around as a child and I'd get, I lived on the farm, I'd get on the horses and I'd go out and I'd preach to all the little uh, corn stalks and I'd, uh, you know, go out and, and anybody around that would listen, I'd preach to them and find something dead, I'd pray over it, you know, cover it up and pray over it, try to make it come back to life, never did. But I did pray over it nevertheless. Now, but there was a point where you knew something about your mother. Your mother had cancer. Yes. What was wrong with your mother? Well, they said, uh, matter of fact, it's the first real supernatural miracle I ever saw. And uh, I, at that point, I was working for the Southern Baptist. And uh, you were they the first me. woman ordained yes. as a Southern Baptist. Right. I'm understand. still ordained Southern Baptist. Sure am. And uh, but anyway, they called me home, and, and five doctors had said that mother was going to die. They'd sent her home at that time, this early 70s. They sent her home to die. And uh, my brother and sister had told me that she probably would not make it through the weekend. And so I came home on a Friday, said that she would not make it through Sunday. And on the plane coming down, said, I heard what again I thought sounded like a voice to me. It said, Tell your mother the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and stop there. And said, In heaven there is no sickness. And, it, and then I heard it again three times. And I, I, I remember saying, my mother's a good Baptist. She knows there's more to that, to that prayer than that. You know, I, I thought, she, she's not going to get this. And then I said to the Lord, you tell somebody else the same thing and let them tell me. Because I knew out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be confirmed. So I said, you tell somebody else. Got home. Mother was in a semi-coma. She did not know I was there, sure enough. And, uh, but my sister called and uh, she had had a dream. And in the dream, she, the Lord had said, tell your mother the Lord's Prayer. Same identical thing. Make a long story short, what we ended up doing, we went and sat by her bed. They gave her less than 48 hours to live, sat by her bed. She never knew we were there. And over and over again, said, we said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And kept saying over and over. And gradually she came out of that coma. The more we spoke the word of God to her, she came out, was instantaneously healed. What, what did the doctor say? Well, I mean, they, wrote, they had written her off. They had. A matter of fact, I later saw at the Medical College of Georgia on her record, miracle written across it. And miracle. She, miracle. Hey, doctors usually don't do That's that. That's right. She just died three years ago, and this happened in the early 70s. So she lived 20-something years, but 28 years after I, that. I like what Sandra just said. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and God told you there's no sickness, no sickness in, heaven. in heaven. No sickness in heaven. That's pretty heaven. good. That's right. I like that. And just the word by itself did it, see? Just the power of the word by itself brought her up. We didn't, because we were ignorant. We didn't know anything else to do. We just spoke that word over and over and over again, that prayer. Now, I over. heard, I mean, you, you look nice and conservative and refined and dignified, <laughs> but you. I heard when you were in Baptist college, yes. they kicked you out of the dorms. Is they that did. true? That is the truth. They <laughs> well, did. Why did they do that? I was praying for people to be healed. And, uh, were uh, any people healed? Yeah, they were. They really were. People were being healed. And now, Tell me one person that was healed. One, 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 describe one condition. Of one condition was, a matter of fact, it was years later. She called me on the phone one morning, and this, this lady, I said, she said, are you Sandra Kennedy? And I said, yes. And I, basically, it was stomach ailments or, or 
with the teeth or something of that nature, what we would call small, but they were big if it's happening to you, you know. Huh. And uh, but a couple of years later, I was out of the seminary and got this phone call on a Saturday morning, and this this uh, strange voice, sound li uh, like a, a foreign voice, said, "Are you Sandra Kennedy?" And I said, "Yes." She said, "God told me to call you." And uh, she said, we were in seminary together. You prayed for me in seminary. God told me to call you. I'm supposed to have surgery in the morning. He said to call you and have you pray for me and I wouldn't have to have surgery. Hadn't seen the woman about 10 years. I said, I don't even remember what I prayed for you in school for, much less, who are you? And she told me again, she said, you prayed for my tooth in seminary and God instantaneously healed my tooth. I said, how did you find me? How did you even find me? And Good she question. said, uh, I said, where are you? Are you in Brazil? Where are you? Because she was a Brazilian. Mm -hmm. and, and she says, no, I, I'm, I'm not. She says, I'm here in the States. And, and said, God told me how to find you. That's all she ever said. God told me how to find you. I could hardly understand her because of her accent. And uh, so I said, well, okay. And I prayed for her. And a week later, got a letter from her, totally, completely, instantaneously healed. Now, speaking of teeth, you blew yeah. me out of the, the chair, so to speak, <laughs> not the saddle, because before this television show started, yes. you told me about one of your board of directors right. and what happened to his teeth. It was a her teeth. Uh, well, what happened <laughs> right. to her teeth? Right. <laughs> one of her teeth, uh, uh, in, in a meeting, she uh, had a filling in her tooth and it came a gold crown, a gold crown appeared in her mouth. And her records were with the Medical College of Georgia, which is there in Augusta. And she went back, because her dentistry is done there, she went back there and sure enough, they looked at it and they said, we did not do this. Did we, they test it? Did they, t did they say that that crown was gold? Yes, they did. They said it gold. was gold and said they did not do it. They do not use that kind of gold. They said they did not do it. How she do, still has it. How do, how do you know she wasn't lying? Well, I mean, you can open her mouth, you can see it. Did you? Yes, I did. Yes. I mean, we all were looking at it. You can't imagine. It's huge. It's a huge gold crown sitting in the in, back, in, in, back on, on her. Uh, there, there, there are people watching us right now that are saying, that's impossible. <laughs> but that was the University of Georgia? No, uh, Medical College of Georgia. The Medical College of Georgia says it's gold a gold crown. You know what? That thing that's impossible in your life, maybe it's not so impossible. Keep listening. Do you know why? Because I believe on this show, many of you are going to reach out into the invisible world and draw a miracle equivalent to that. I can't wait. We'll be right back after this word. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Sandra Kennedy, and she was telling us just before we took this last break about one of her members of her board of directors had a gold crown in her teeth, just formed. And Sandra, you told me that you were just telling that story on television, yes. not saying, not even praying for people, right. and what happened? Well, people began to call in that they, had they were receiving in their homes gold, crowns, fillings, uh, I didn't pray for it. I don't understand it, but it happens. All I know is it happened. And it's happening right now. Yeah. I mean, right this second, it's happening. Yeah. As a matter of fact, what would happen if you have your favorite dog? I mean, you know, a dog you really love. And Sandra loves, I assume you love your I dog. I love my dog, Do precious. you still love your dog? I love my dog, still precious. You still do. What, <laughs> right. did, what did your precious dog do to you? Well, five months ago, my precious dog, she and I, we hit our heads. I was bending down, she jumped up, and her her tooth caught my nose, came and ripped off this lip on this side from oh, right here to over here. It's still your favorite dog? Still my favorite dog. She didn't mean to do it. She's a good dog. It's wonderful. Totally right, that would not be my good dog, but go ahead. <laughs> ripped it off. I mean, ripped it off on the, on the floor, ripped it off. And uh, it, the uh, on three eighths, the floor, I mean, tore it off, the lip on the floor. The lip was on the floor? Yes, on the floor. And uh, I went, ran to the hospital, of course, and, and uh, they, uh, 
he told me he took out three eighths of an inch. Matter of fact, he told me if you were to take a nickel and put a nickel up here on this side, mm -hmm. that that's how much I lost. And my, my nose was sitting over here. It was terrible, absolutely terrible. Told me I'd have to have three to six more surgeries and, and tried to show me a book with pictures of cleft mm -hmm. lips. And I said, I will never watch it because I will never have another surgery because God will form it and put it back. So he was telling you, you would have a, you, for life a yeah, cleft yeah. lip, and I even said, no. with surgeries? Oh, he said, he said that, yeah, even with the surgeries. Ooh. He said, because you've lost the lip, you can't repair something that's it's not there. So it's not even there. So this was a, a, a plastic surgery. He said, we, we can't do it. And so I So began, where is it? I don't see it. Well, I'm telling you, God <laughs> supernaturally did it. Matter of fact, I went back uh, three, about three weeks ago. You didn't ago. have the additional surgery? No. I've never had another surgery. Never going to have another surgery. So uh, did he have a comment to make he about this? He said this, this is miraculous. He called in all of his nurses, called anybody. He said this is miraculous. He said if, I, if it had happened to my bottom lip, he said your bottom lip can reform itself. He said but your top lip cannot. And he said whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. I said well let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm speaking to it every single day. I'm telling it to form itself. I'm telling it to move itself. I'm telling it to fill itself out. And God is my witness. It has done it. You're looking at me. You see, it's, he's done I it. I see. And on top of that, uh, on several times on our television program, people have called in and they watched the lip move. This is only five months ago that this happened. He they, told me it would take a year. I would never have a, take a year for my whole smile to come back and all kinds of so stuff. So they were watching from week to week and they could see the right, progress. Right. I did not I did not go and hide myself away like anybody who has good sense. I just immediately went back on TV. <laughs> what, what about <laughs> those five it. women that had hysterectomies? You realize you can't have children yes, after a complete hysterectomy. I do, yes. Tell me about one of them. Well, one of them has named I mean, by the way, did you did you catch that? Five women, complete hysterectomies. All five had children. Tell me about one. Well, one of them was up in, well, matter of fact, most of them are in North Carolina. And, and, uh, but one of them has named their daughter after me, you know, and just, uh, you know, they just came and in a prayer line told me what, that they wanted to have children and they'd have a hysterectomy. And I prayed for them that they would conceive and have a child, and they did. Did you have any doubt when you prayed for them? No. None? None. Not even 1%? No. Same thing, I had a, I had a lady who came who had a, uh, an eye a transplanted eye, the eye died and became disconnected from the socket. Does not sound, it sounds as bad as what happened to your lips I'm telling you, pretty nose. bad. And the woman began to see out of that eye. No. Dead, disconnected, transplanted eye. That, that is, I mean, all these things are impossible, impossible. But that's impossible, impossible. That is impossible. I mean, there's impossible and there's, there's impossible, impossible. Right. This can't happen, Sandra. It did. It did. I watched her. I did not know what was wrong with her. Uh, I just prayed for her eyes, and then she was with her daughter, and she began on the stage of where we were, there were all color flags were on the stage, and she began to yell out red, blue, green, orange, all the colors, and I had already gone past her, and I came back, and I said, you know, what's happening here? And the daughter said to me, said, you don't understand, said she has cataracts in one eye, but the other eye was a dead, transplanted, disconnected eye. That is the eye she's seeing out of. Now, out of curiosity, if you look at that eye, will it look like it's dead or did it come back to life? Oh, it looks perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. You would not ever know anything was wrong with it. How about cancers? Oh, more cancer cures than anything, percentage-wise than anything. So, so you're cures. talking about nutrition? Cancer cures or no, you're... No, I'm talking about the power of God. I know what you're talking about. I'm setting you up, Sandra. <laughs> I'm talking about God doing this. I'm talking about... That's even better than nutrition, <laughs> right. you know? I mean, I'm nutrition is nice, but that... I'm super, talking supernatural, instantaneous healings. I'm talking about what God and God's Word does. What's going to happen to some of our viewers when we pray for them in a little bit? What's going to happen to them? I believe many will be healed. I do, too. I believe many will be healed. Now, you actually were caught up into heaven? Yes. Tell me about that. I was uh, in my car and uh, going, uh, Fort Gordon is in Augusta. I was coming by, I mentioned it only to tell you that I went 22 miles without knowing anything about who was driving my car. You because were driving it. I was driving by myself in my car. But you don't know what happened well, I glanced, 22 miles. No, I glanced over and saw the entrance of Fort Gordon and the next thing I saw was the garage doors at my house. I do not know anything about that because that I was in heaven. I was in heaven. I had, uh, matter of fact, I, uh, I was in the throne room of heaven. I did not see God the Father from the breast up. 
I saw from the waist down, but I knew it was God the Father. There wasn't a doubt about it. I knew it. I had been told that I had a spirit of rejection. I was Baptist. I didn't even know what a spirit of rejection was. And so I used to cry and cry and cry, Lord, why don't you love me as much as you do everybody else? That same syndrome that most people go through. And so when I went up to heaven, uh, I saw a little girl over to the side, which was me. My parents were separated when I was very small. And I saw this little girl that I recognized as me, that little girl. And the father, I knew it was God the Father. Again, I never saw above like the waist. I saw waist down. But I knew it was God the Father. Clap his hands and do like this. And when he did, that little girl ran, jumped in his lap. And at that moment, that little girl became me. And the arms of God came around me. And then I began to speak in languages I did not know or did not understand. Did you hear that? I believe the arm of God is going to come around you. Some of you need embracing. Some of you need to feel the pure, not this sexual, unclean, love outside of marriage junk, but pure love of God. Get ready. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Call now and get Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from its Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Through Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, you will receive the supernatural keys that unlock the door for you to step into freedom from disease and step into the abundant life which Jesus provided for you. Through it, you will be inspired to believe God for the impossible as you read Sandra's personal healing testimony. Learn how to enact the power of God's Word so you can conquer anything and everything the enemy sends your way and continue to walk in victory all the days of your life. Understand how to clear every obstacle keeping you from receiving your miracle. Receive a list of healing scriptures that you can pray and confess to receive your own healing breakthrough. Receive an impartation of persistent, tenacious faith to help you access every promise of God for your life. These principles apply to every area of your life, including health, emotions, family, finances, relationships, employment, protection, and more. You will also receive her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Through her teachings, you will learn that receiving your healing is not complicated. Learn the keys of believing and speaking out loud God God's Word, coming into agreement on how to act upon His promises for your life. Discover how to activate God's Word and experience His healing power. One of our readers, she's been reading books now about healing as she listened to the CDs, as she read this brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, instantly healed. This is how you do it our brand new book and three CD series. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from its Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 2827. Please specify offer number 9464 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. And this experience that Sandra Kennedy, I mean, being caught up in heaven and this deep rejection. Let, let's go to Janie Duvall in the control room. Janie, you imagine getting rid of rejection that way, having God embrace you? So many people go for counseling for years and years to get rid of rejection. i rather do it her way. You know, when she talked about supernatural languages, I just feel really impressed. God gave me supernatural languages too, and there's someone listening right now who's going to understand this. I'm speaking by the Spirit because I don't know how to speak other languages. Et les entrées vigées au contraire, mais les entrées vigées au contraire, il avait tous les yeux jules. Entrées une donne et le côté l'air aussi porte vigée c'est la vie seule et c'est le toit d'un trône de Zigovian. There's somebody who understood that, and it was a message to them. Janie, who's up next week? 
You'll be interviewing Warren Marcus, who is an award-winning filmmaker who has filmed revivals that have happened in the past 10 years. But you and Warren will be talking about why, why have we had these revivals in the past 100 years? What's the key to make these miracles happen? And one key is in 1948, Israel became a nation at the same time when Israel became a nation, all of a sudden, all these healings took place all over the world, inc including creative miracles and parts of bodies growing back. And, and I know, I absolutely know, that we are on the verge right now of the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in history. We're gonna see miracles like the world has never seen. We're just going to see people with limbs that are going to actually be restored, and it's tied, and, that, and that's what's so exciting about this guest. It's all tied to what happens with natural Israel has an impact in the spirit world. I'm looking forward to Warren Markets, but Sandra Kennedy, have you ever seen uh, a limb grow out of any kind? Well, we've seen new toes grow. New yeah, toes? New toes, yeah. That's not supposed that this wasn't a baby. <laughs> no, 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 no. Tell this me. was a man who, uh, you know, we have a healing center where people come from over the nation where we just teach them the Word of God. And this man came and he was supposed to have his, his, his feet amputated. And uh, we just took the Word of God, taught them the Word of God and what God's Word has to say about healing. And brand new little pink toes began to grow. I don't, he never had, of course, he didn't lose his, lose his foot. New toes. Is, is there, let me ask this question. I know people come from all over the world to uh, be prayed for, uh, but everyone doesn't get healed. Why? No. no. Uh, you know, the, the Bible says this, the secret things belong to the Lord. And I believe that you don't really know everybody's heart and everything that's going on. We teach them the Word. If I can teach you the Word, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we teach you the Word and try to get you to fall really in love with Jesus to see how wonderful He is and that He wants you well, that He is the healer. And so we teach you that. And if we can get you to believe, I believe if I can get you to really hear, we can get you healed. But getting people to hear is difficult sometimes because all uh, traditions traditions, religion, cultures, all kind of things get in the way. Uh, before well, I... What, what about all those brain dead people? Seven. You, seven? What happened to seven brain dead people? Well, I think it was six. I don't want to stretch six. it. Maybe it was six. You know, and I, I have dead. noticed that, and in, in one of the things that is upsetting to most people is exaggerating. God doesn't need exaggerations, and I happen to admire how Sandra would not let that slip out. You wanted, it, God doesn't need any no, help, he does doesn't. he? No, what he's done is pretty outstanding. Tell me about one brain dead person. One brain dead person, we've put him on television. One was uh, a nurse at the Medical College of Georgia, had a car accident, had like a balloon blow up. They gave her like eight minutes to, to live. They let our healing teams, we do healing teams, healing teams come into the trauma unit. She was a nurse. Go into the, we went into the trauma unit. They had already unplugged her, and she came up off of that, uh, that bed, totally and completely healed. Now, I've, we've had six like this. I mean, the last minutes, unplugging them, come up brain dead. Sandra, recently on international television, Larry King said to someone that was a healing evangelist, well, you're so good. Why don't you just go into every hospital? Do you go into every hospital? We do. You we do? We go into every hospital. There's what do you not do? A, there is not a hospital in the city that does not uh, let us come into the trauma units, the emergency rooms, or into the hospitals themselves. Doctors and nurses call us. We have healing teams that we send into the hospitals. They call us and we come. We do go into hospitals. And, and recently, you've been actually teaching medical staff? Yes, Explain medical that. students. At the Medical College of Georgia for the last three or four years, I've gone in to teach another side of healing to some of the classes there. What side do you teach? Ooh, what God can do. <laughs> what God you, can you do. The do great this? physician. You, oh, I go in with my Bible. To I, medical students? I go in with my Bible. And see, I teach the way you get healed is the same way you get saved. The same identical way. Which is? Well, you ask Jesus into your heart. You believe who He is. You ask Him into your life. You believe He is the Son of God. You believe that He forgave you of your sins. If you can believe that, you can believe He'll heal you. 
Okay, the same I, I want way. you to pray right now for the people that want to be healed at this second. Would you do that? I'll do that. Right now, all you have to do is just believe that God is still in the healing business. Reach out to Him and ask Him, claim it. Say, Father, I thank you for healing me. Jesus, you are my healer. And whatever it is, if it's a body part, whatever it is that's hurting, I command it to go in the name of Jesus. I command the pain to get off me in Jesus' name because the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, I am already healed. You're and saying God that with such it. confidence. You know what I want you to do right now? Continue, continue. I want you to walk right into the invisible realm because your healing is there. It's in the invisible realm. I want you to do something by faith. Whatever you are doing right now, stand up. Yes, right now, you, stand up. And I, wa I want you to take a step forward into your healing. This is, this is called faith. Walk right into that invisible realm. And I'm telling you that right now, I could, I, pains are disappearing. From, from necks right now, uh, headaches are going, tumors are disappearing, eyes are being healed, uh, backs are being healed, necks are so strong in necks right now. I mean, ears <laughs> open. Uh, Sandra. Oh, the, cancers are falling off. They are, <laughs> they curse them to the root. Cancer tumors are shrinking and falling off. You realize that this is God that is doing this. And some of you, are feeling his presence. Better than feeling his presence is to have him embrace you and take away all your rejection. I pray in Jesus' name, Sandra and I agree in Jesus' name that rejection is off and the love of God is pouring into you right now. His love, it's going right through your body and all that rejection, it's pouring right out. It's pouring right out. It's as if God is putting his arms right around you and saying, my son, my daughter, you are my son. You are my daughter. I love you. You have value. To me, you have value. You are precious in my sight. Jesus, you're so good.